we all knew that Kurishima's flashback would continue, but I don't think any of us probably expected the outcome of what really happened and how he tried to change himself. Truly inspirational, truly, truly impressive, and I'm always amazed by Horikoshi's wonderful writing and how he just does so many unexpected things with his characters. The entire message here of who Kurishima looks up to, the hero he looks up to, and what he stands for, it... wow. It, okay, so... Basically, let, let me just read from the page, okay? I just want to read the conversation, like, you know, what Kurishima's idol said, okay? So you see this interview start and all that. You see this hologram pop up, which, FYI, letting you all know that, remember, Boku no Hero Academia is set in the future, so there is technology that isn't in today's society. So that, I know many of us probably forget that because the way the setting is, but... Yeah, you know, Boku no Hero Academia is set in the future, so holograms and stuff do exist. Now, with that being said, though, you have this hologram activate, and Kurishima sees his idol start to speak, and it's at a perfect time. It's at a very perfect time for this to happen, and it's actually, the way it's used is really, really good in a way, because it shows that Kurishima didn't need something else to force him on the right path. What made him start this journey and set out to become a great hero that his idol is what gave him that inspiration, and it was his very idol that put him back on the right path. And the thing was, it wasn't that his idol said anything new, it wasn't that. His idol said the exact same thing, it was the exact same thing that probably got Kurishima to even want to become a hero in the first place. But the message here is very powerful, so before I dive into the meaning, I just want to read it, okay? And then I'll probably talk about the meaning while I'm reading it, actually. So the interview starts off, and it's like in the middle of it, it's like, that ain't it at all. And then Kurishima starts thinking, was this thing how I first came to know him again? I'm terribly sorry, right? So if you'd allow me to ask you a few questions. So as you can see, he's getting an interview. Alright, lay him on me. In comparison to other heroes, your image as a reckless hero who rushes in headlong is quite prominent. May I ask, do you feel no fear over throwing yourself into harm's way? That is something very interesting, actually, because... The way this is being mentioned, it actually is very relevant to what has been going on with some of our other characters. One of the big ones is Izuku. Let's think about Izuku for a second, okay? Izuku is a madman. This man charges in and is willing to throw his life away, break every bone in his body just to say so. And it's, it's admirable, like, you know, I can, you really admire someone that's willing to go that far. But at the same time, the behavior of Izuku is just reckless and it's just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because I know you want to save people, but you need to be able to save yourself first before you can save anyone in the first place. But Izuku lacked that, and he's trying to improve that, obviously. But that was a big thing about his character. Now, with what's being said here, it's very relevant to what Izuku does and All Might did to himself. For instance, in comparison to other heroes, your image as a reckless hero who rushes in headlong is quite prominent. Basically, the, he has this uh, overall aura around him where he rushes in and it looks like he just doesn't care about anything. Like he doesn't care about his own life or well-being, he just goes in to get the job done. It, it doesn't look like he actually cares about himself at all if he gets injured or whatever, and that's why the reporter is asking. He's like, may I ask, do you feel no fear over throwing yourself? in the harm's way like are you not scared of what's about to happen like you could possibly die or whatever he's like just what do you think i am of course i feel fear now this tries to make the character this idol that kurishima looked up to more human when you think of an idol okay let's just put this in a nice good perspective okay when you think of an idol if someone you admire or look up to sometimes you don't always view that type of person as your idol as a regular person sometimes you view that idol as someone that's more than a person someone that is someone you can never be someone that is above everyone else you've ever seen that's what an idol kind of is and this entire interview showcases that this man is not just a hero. He is not an idol to Kurishima. He is a human. He makes mistakes. He feels fear like a normal person, but he does the best things he can do at his disposal. So he replies like, of course I feel fear when I rush in head first. Anybody who rushes into the job deaf without feeling any fear is either a complete dumbass or a 
censored bleep. So we don't know exactly what he said, but most likely it was pretty rude. So it shows that this man does have some harsh language when it comes to what he says. But the point stands here is he's saying, like, any hero that rushes in and does not have any fear, does it feel fear, there's something wrong with you. Like, there's legit something wrong with you. There's a problem, and this needs to be corrected. So he's like, yes, I feel fear. Yes, I am human. I have emotions. I'm not a crazy man that goes in and tries to fight. He's like, back when I was a sidekick, so he's trying to, you know, talk about his past. Back when I was a sidekick, there were times when I wasn't able to save some people's lives. So, like... As we know what's going on with Kurishima right now, Kurishima, he's been going through so much shit. And what we've seen now about how his character is, how he regrets, and how he had a lot of fear and he couldn't move and all that, he froze up. We have seen the things that's been plaguing him as a person. It was finally, officially revealed these past couple chapters. And you could see in this entire interview that Kurishima's idol was very similar. He had the exact same emotions, and we gotta remember this, okay? All these pro heroes, one point or time, they were just like Kurishima, Izuku, Bakugo, Todoroki. They were all like them at one point. Maybe they had a better head start because they had a better quirk ability or something or uh, different, you know, advantages or whatever. But the point stands is, is all of these pro heroes, they started off just like Kurishima, Izuku, and Bakugo and all of them. They weren't like pro heroes right at the start. They had to work up the ladder and be where they are today. They had to overcome their own trials and errors. They had to overcome issues that plagued them. They had to overcome things that made them feel like they couldn't even become a hero. I mean, you gotta remember what we've been seeing. This also applies to already the heroes that are pro heroes. They have went probably through their own character arcs, their own development, and seen so much shit that they are very similar and could probably relate to, you know, some of these characters like Kurishima or Sun Eater, what they've been going through. And so when he's like, yes, when I was a sidekick, very similar to Kurishima, I wasn't able to save people. I, I couldn't save people. And then the interviewer was like, I know, it can't be helped. Crime rates are on the rise now, so there's nothing. And then, you know, he, he interrupts the person I was interviewing. He's like, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. Basically, the interviewer was trying to say, like, yes, with the increased crime rates, obviously you won't be able to save everyone. It's kind of like this, okay? You're one person, and at the end of the day, you can't save everyone. Like, if there's a thousand crimes going on, let's say you're an amazing hero, okay? You can settle 700 out of the thousand crimes, you're still going to have people you can't save because it's just not possible for you to do. And so that's kind of what the person that was reporting or interviewing the hero was like, of course, with crime rates, you know, rising, you just can't save everyone. He's like, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying because of rising crime rates, I legit couldn't save someone. I couldn't save someone's life that was right in front of me that I was supposed to save. That's what he's trying to imply. So this implies that this idol, Kurishima's idol, has lost people, loved ones. He has lost someone probably very dear to him, probably probably family, friends, parents, it, we, we really don't know, but he's definitely lost someone in front of him that he wanted to save, because his dialogue in the interview proves that this man has went through his own pain, his own grief, and he uh, is definitely a perfect example of someone that had to overcome these issues, and it explains his behavior of why he charges in like he does, so it shows that this man... What he felt is very similar to what Kurishima is feeling, and he's like, holy shit, he also went through what I'm going through, but look at him now. It's very inspiring in a way. Now, Kurishima starts thinking about, he's like, I was still in elementary when he said all that. His words were still too difficult for me to grasp back then. They didn't sink in. This entire panel, I have to say, made this chapter 10 out of 10. That panel made this chapter 10 out of 10. It'll hear me out why. I think all of us, okay, have probably heard in the past our parents or someone in your life, even if it was your parents, someone in your life had to say, I'm telling you this as a word of wisdom or something, like let's say they tell you that, you know, this is how life is or whatever, or this is what would happen to the these certain things or what people do. Basically, let's say your parents, you know, take you down, sit you down, and they try to talk, okay? They talk some adult stuff to you. But you're a kid. You're like five years old, ten years old, or they say like, oh, it's not easy putting food on the table or whatever, Okay. Your parents say something like this to you. When you're a kid, you don't really understand. You take that for granted, and you don't really know what that really means, or what they're really doing for you. you it doesn't sink in their words, and you just don't understand. And this panel, when he says, when I was in elementary, I didn't understand what he was saying. I, even though I enjoyed what he was doing, I thought he was super cool and all of that, it just, I didn't understand what the message was. And Kurishima realized this now because it makes perfect sense. When you're a child and you are 
coming face to face with something that you've never seen or heard before, you don't understand how certain things are done in the world, obviously you won't get the main message. But since Kurishima is entering high school, and he has seen some things, and he knows how life kind of works more now, he can understand some things that have a truer meaning to it. For instance, what his idol was trying to say and convey to people that, you know, are also facing issues that he faced in the past. And so Kurishima, it, it's kind of like this. It's like a kid that was five years old, Hearing his parents say something about bills, food, whatever, and then he finally becomes an adult and he realizes he has to pay bills, he has to pay, give himself own money for food or whatever, and so he realizes, holy crap, like now I understand the words of advice my parents gave me. The words they said at that time I didn't understand, but now I do. So it's kind of like a child growing up and realizing what the person in the past said to them. That, like I said, makes this chapter 10 out of 10 just for how real that feels. That's a very very real moment because that has even happened to me and I think many of us can agree that has happened to a lot of us now as he continues the interview he's like I'm saying that I hesitated for a second so basically he's going a little bit more in depth with what happened to the people that died in front of him he hesitated he was scared very similar to Kurishima he was scared he was very scared for his own life and he's like I hesitated because your heart was weak you couldn't save him that's what Kurishima was saying to himself but that's also what, you know, the interviewer was saying and all that. So basically, the hero admits that he couldn't save someone because he was scared. He, he was scared, he didn't want to die. And he's saying, like, this is my flaw, my fault. And it's very human to admit your flaws. It's very manly as well to admit your flaws. Because nobody is perfect. No matter how good you are as a person, no matter how amazing you are or whatever, there's always some form of flaws. There, there's always a flaw in someone. There always is. I have my own share of flaws. I admit that. And I think we all can agree we all have flaws. Somewhere or another, we have a flaw. And he is trying to say, like, I'm not perfect. I may be an amazing hero. I may inspire people. But I am not perfect. I make mistakes. I do things that I wish I never did. And this, this is beautiful development right here. It's not just developing Kurishima, but it's also giving characterization to Kurishima's idol and what he represents. He's like, villains and death itself are both terrifying. It's just that I know there's something even scarier than death. The final expression of the faces of the dead and the torment of failing to save them. It's because I have experienced them that I charge into the fray. What exactly does a manly spirit mean to you? It's the attitude you carry within your soul. And I may say manly, but it goes the same for any gender. And it doesn't mean being confident either, or not knowing fear. I save people cause I'm a hero. Once you made that decision in your heart, then you stake your life on it. A manly heart to me is a life led without regret. That... That is just... That's some powerful words right there of wisdom. Basically, the man admits he is flawed. He has fucked up. He has had moments of doubt. He has had moments to where he felt like he couldn't do anything. He had moments to where he saw the faces of people he should have saved die in front of him because he fucked up. And he admits this. This is something that normally people don't want to tackle and face, but he admitted that. And that takes someone with a lot of balls to be able to do, especially when you're in the middle of an interview. And we know how the world of heroes works in this series. Publicity is a big thing here. If you're... Your ratings or people view you in a negative light, it just it won't be good for you at all. So for this man to go out of his way to say something like that, it's like he was saying, you know what, fuck how, you know, normal society is in this world. I want to give pieces of advice to people out there that face similar things I went through. It's kind of like he's a true hero. He's a perfect example of a brilliant hero. He's not a fake hero out there for money. He's not a fake hero out there to, you know, just save the day or whatever and then get people to like him. He's out there to do his job because that is what he wants to do. That is what he's meant to do. And so he is a perfect example of a true hero. Someone that Stain himself would probably even like because of the type of person he is. Stain might not have liked him in the past because of who he was, but thanks to what he has become now, Stain most likely would really enjoy this man. Oh yes. So, let's talk about Kurishima and what this means, okay? Regret. The man... The reason why he jumped into the actual fray and took the hit for Fat Gum 
He did that because of his fear. He did that because of what his hero said. He's like, yes, I feel fear. Yes, I'm scared for my life. Yes, I don't want to die. But you know what's worse than dying? Seeing the faces of the ones that you should have protected die in front of you and their tormented faces. That is what Kurishima did and why he jumped in the front of Fat Gum. He didn't want to see Fat Gum die. He didn't want to see the man have this tormented face and fall over dead. And Kurishima, he could have done something, but he didn't. He didn't want to regress into what he once was. He wanted to showcase that he has definitely changed as a person. And so, that is very human as well. That is something many of us face in everyday life. I mean, when you go through something in your life, let's say... Let's let's bring up a perfect example. Let's say you have a problem with cigarettes or something, okay? And you know cigarettes are straight bad for well, cigarettes are bad for you, but I'm not I'm not one to tell you to stop or whatever because it's not my place. But as you know, cigarettes are bad for you. Basically, you know they're bad for you, and you want to stop because for some reason it's ruining ruining your relationship with others and all that. So you need to stop. And so you finally stop after so many years or whatever your entire life. The cigarettes dragging you down, and when you finally overcome this weakness, you look back at it and you always are scared that you will regress and go back into that once again smoking cigarettes that is very similar to what Krishma is going through he doesn't want to regress into what he once was being so scared that he doesn't move that he doesn't save someone he rather you know jump in there and be scared to death and actually die than someone that watches someone die in front of him when he could have done something that it is a very, very manly thing to do, but I like that too, because it's very real, because, you know, re regressed character development is honestly a real thing too. That happens for people as well. People just regress and they don't learn their lesson. Like, it looks like they learn the lesson, but then they regress and they go back into their old ways. That's what Kurishima fears. He doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to become what he once was, and it's always plaguing his mind and why he's always thinking about this and why it seems like it's been dragging him down since the very beginning of the series is because that is something he truly fears, but it's also his driving force to why he wants to become a hero because he wants to overcome that weakness within him. So that is, like I said, inspirational. So let's talk about Mina for a second. So Mina, th this is going to be a quick part because I want to end this video soon, but Mina as a character, holy shit, she's a character that doesn't get a lot of panel time or a lot of spotlight. I mean, she's here and there, but she doesn't get a lot of, you know, panel time like other characters do. And I think eventually Horikoshi will dive into Mina's character and give her her own little flashback arc and development and stuff. But for now, though, what we got for these past two chapters really show how important Mina is to Kurishima. Now, I know, like I've said so many times, this isn't a romance series. I have to ship these two characters. I really ship Mina and Kurishima, especially after this latest chapter. They're just so adorable. But the way she was just an inspiration for him as well. It wasn't just his idol, but Mina as well inspired Kurishima to be a better person. He even changed his hairstyle to represent his idol, but also represent Mina as well. So just Mina's character... I really love what Horikoshi has done these past two chapters. She's a truly impressive character. And like I've said, even though she does have a lot of panel time and she hasn't gotten a lot of focus in the series, these two chapters have really shown that she is a very important character. She's a very important piece in Kurishima's life. She inspires him and she also is someone that he wants to be like. So... I really love that about what this chapter represents. It's not just about Kurishima's idol, it's also about his childhood friend in a way. For instance, Mina. So, very sweet stuff. I really like what Horikoshi did, and I cannot wait to finally see Mina have her own arc, her own little flashback and all that in the future, because it's bound to happen because of how Horikoshi writes this series. So I am really looking forward to the day and then we find out more about her and what drove her to be like she was and how she did things that not even Kurishima was capable of doing. Now, one other thing before I end this video. We also have it to where we get the actual example of why Kurishima has a scar on his, you know, eyebrow. We finally get to see a panel showcasing that he cut his eye when he first unlocked his hardening abilities. And we also get to see how this man, you know... He is someone that is trying to change and better himself with every single day, so I like that. Very good chapter, Boku no Hero Academia. 
and I just can't wait to see what's going to happen next. And also Fat Gum 1, too. I mean, that was to be expected, but these two chapters were clearly for Kurishima's development. A little bit oddly placed flashback, like I said, but I think overall it's fine. I mean, this definitely was worth it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love you all so much. Please be safe. Chibi out.